never been a town where people had it so good like Hollywood. <laughs> Not Inglewood, not Westwood, not Brentwood, Hollywood, Hollywood. favorite streets in Hollywood. Named after a pretty well-known guy. Matter of fact, he was a detective too, a guy from New York. Uh, actually, I went to school with this guy. Well, I didn't really go to school with him. I took his uh, correspondence course. He had a correspondence course on how to be a detective. <laughs> I think I uh, sent enough money to get two chapters. Sent him five dollars for uh, a magnifying glass and uh, first two chapters, how to be a detective. The guy solved a lot of crimes though. Everybody knew who he was. Uh, even solved the Black Dahlia murders. And they named a whole street after the guy. His name was Mel. Yeah, Mel Rose. What a guy. There's the El Adobe. You know who used to go there, don't you? That Linda Ronstadt and that, uh, that Jerry Brown guy. They went there a lot. One of their uh, favorite margarita holes. This is Sam. Oh, no. Oh, you're right in front of me. Right. We're going past uh, the uh, Hollywood Rock Walk. I'm looking at it right now. Now I saw the Cadillac. Did you drive all the way from Bakersfield? <laughs> oh, yeah, the Guitar Center. Oh, man, yeah, you're right. Now I used to eat, eat there all the time, right beside the Guitar Center. They tore it down. I don't know. Guy used to call me by my first name, too. I'd go in and get a cheeseburger, well done, mustard only. How are you, one? Yeah, down on the Sunset Strip. Man, I got some stories about this. Listen, I tell you what, um, check back with me in a little while. Uh, where are you going? Now, I don't have too many stories about Westwood, man. Most of my stories take place on the Strip. Yeah, Johnny Rivers was quite a guy. I used to hang out with him backstage at the Whiskey. He got real popular playing that club. A lot of people don't know this, but he recorded one of my favorite songs. Yep, a country rock version of Long Black Veil. Live at the Whiskey. Down here in Hollywood on the Sunset Strip, the 7-Eleven stores really aren't allowed to sell too much liquor. As a result, the local populace often frequent this establishment, Gil Turner's. Celebrity John Belushi actually came in here and bought his last pint of vodka and then went to the Chateau Marmont and died. And right down there, a half block, is the Roxy and the Rainbow. I was in there one night with Johnny Paycheck and he was trying to get some tequila, but he, they didn't really serve him the kind of worm he wanted. So we walked up here to Gil Turner's and well, we bought a bottle of booze. Well, I'm from the country and I don't know too much about the rest of the world, but I do know about Hollywood and I know about North Hollywood. Most of the country music was in North Hollywood, mainly due to the Palomino Club. But oftentimes, Willie Whalen and me I like to come down to the Sunset Strip and hang out with the rock and roll stars. And we did that down the street at the Roxy and the Rainbow. Let's check that place out and see what they're like now. Yeah, one night Kinky Friedman was here. I picked him up at the airport too. I always get stuck picking up these guys. But he wanted to go to the Roxy because a friend of his was playing there, a guy named Lyle Lovett. So he went. Lyle Lovett was on stage mainly by himself. He had a guitar and a piano, but it was a pretty good show. I'd classify Lyle Lovett 10 years ago as basic country rock or maybe country rock. But the fun part was after the show, we all went next door to the Rainbow and hung out with the rock and roll crowd. Now there was a group over there that was starting to get really popular. I think their name was Guns and Poses. Yeah, Guns and Poses. 
Anyhow, their lead singer had a real high twangy voice, kind of a tenor kind of thing. He should actually have been singing bluegrass. Yeah, I think his name was Axel. Yeah, that's what it was, Axel Grease. Yeah, the Roxy, we had some good times here, let me tell you. Kinky Friedman came here one night and uh, was singing with John Prine. Back then, people were starting to listen to country music because they were combining country with rock and roll. Of course, everything's changed now, it's just music. But The Roxy at one time gave some pretty good country rock concerts. Barney's Beanery. There's a lot of stories about Barney's Beanery because a lot of the rock people would hang out there. The Birds, Bob Dylan, the night they got through playing for the first time together at the Troubadour when they sang Mr. Tambourine Man. When it was all over, well, Dylan wanted to go to Canners, but not Roger McGuinn, no sir. Dylan went to Canners by himself where he had a pastrami on rye with a kosher pickle, uh, mustard only. And Roger McGuinn, yeah, he went down to Barney's Beanery and he had a cheeseburger well done with mustard only, probably in honor of Janice Joplin. West Hollywood, and one of the most famous eateries in the world. Just about everyone in the entertainment industry, including film and music, at one time or another has been inside this restaurant. Probably the most famous person to ever eat here and die here the very next morning after consuming a cheeseburger well done with mustard only was Janis Joplin. Now Janis wasn't a country singer, but she could really sing the blues. Yeah, there used to be a few clubs down on the Sunset Strip. I'd pick the guys up at the Greyhound bus station. Sometimes we'd take a taxi up here, sometimes we'd walk. It would depend what kind of mood everybody was in, what kind of high they were coming down from. The old St. James Club here didn't exist back then. Yeah, we had a lot of fun on the Sunset Strip. I remember way back in 1967, one night, they had the riots on the Sunset Strip. Larry Murray was down here, the Hearts and Flowers, and they ended up singing a song about it called the Rock and Roll Cowboys. Rock and roll cowboys are riding tonight. Ah, what a song that was. A lot of stories, a lot of memories. <laughs> it's triggered a lot of memories, a lot of memories. Just thinking back to all those great days, man. The whole start of the country rock movement was out here. The Birds, the Eagles, the Flying Burrito Brothers, Linda Ronstadt, Stone Ponies. I saw them all. I saw them all at the Troubadour. Everybody was anybody. Played the Troubadour, they played the Palomino. <laughs> yeah, everybody had to had to hang out and talk about the Sunset Strip, down on the Sunset Strip. <clears throat> have to go by the Chateau Marmont. Oh man, I got stories about that place. The Chateau, I can tell you one thing, Graham Parsons and the Flying Burrito Brothers love this place. They actually had a room here when they were recording the Gilded Palace of Sin. I first heard about the Chateau from Kinky Friedman. Now everybody knows Kinky as a Texas singer, songwriter, performer, but lately he's been writing a lot of mystery novels, and he told me he did some of his best work right here at the Chateau in room 209. Once I knew that, I put in my reservation. Oh, it took about three months to get the room. So I moved in, hoping that creativity would strike. I was gonna do my screenplay and sell it to the studios, make it big in Hollywood. The life and times of the Michigan migrant film worker. Well, after about nine days, I had a thousand-dollar room service bill and ended up with a two-page outline. You know, I've been thinking about Kinky Friedman and creativity and the inspiration. I really didn't make out that well at the Chateau. Maybe I should try the Super 8 Motel. There's really not one in Hollywood. But there's a great one in Canoga Park.
Yes, this is Sam. Uh, I'm at the Alex Theater. No, the one in Glendale. It's like a New Year's Eve concert by one of my favorite groups from the, the late 50s, early 60s. Yeah, they were big on college campuses. No, not the Letterman, the Kingston Trio. Yeah, you know, Wade Man, MTA, Tom Dooley. Yeah, that's right. No, it's the original Kingston Trio. It's uh, Bob Shane, Nick Reynolds. Oh, there's, there's a new guy. Uh, well, the new guy's only been with him like 22 years. No, Nick Reynolds is the old new guy. He, he left the group for a while. No, it's a hell of a show if you like folk music. You know, I, I'm into that kind of stuff. Right. Um, Laszlo. No, 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 not Laszlo Kovacs, Laszlo Mauser. That's right, Mauser. Yeah, he's worked with me before. Well, I know I said that, but the guy's cheap. What can I tell you? He had one assignment. Uh, Bronson Cave? No, where, Bronson Cave, where they shot, not Charles Bronson. Bronson Cave, where they shot the movie serials, you know, like Robot Monster and uh, Undersea Kingdom, Phantom Empire, some war movies. Yeah, well, rumor has it that's where the lair of the mimes is. Yeah, the mimes, silent and deadly. He's somewhere, I'm gonna try and find him. Uh, can you do me one favor though? Could I get another retainer? I'm kinda like running low on cash and I'm, I'm running low on batteries. I'd like to go to one of these New Year's Eve parties across the street. Yeah, call me in a while. I'll be in Glendale. Honolulu, Hawaii. Aloha. Yeah. yeah, Marty, if you're only here to pilot the old Honolulu one more time, huh, buddy? We take your guitar, get on board, go down to the Santa Monica Pier, and we'd show off in front of the Flying Burrito, brother. Hey, Marty. <coughs> Down at the West Texas town of El Paso. Ah, those were the days. Picking up Marty Robbins, getting us uh, some chili to go, chili Johns, and getting aboard the old boat. Yeah, the old San Fernando Valley. Home of the country rock movement. The whole thing started here, the Flying Burrito Brothers, the birds. Yeah, it would have had to been there. Only two kinds of music, country and rock and roll. Okay, where's that flight from Bakersfield? Okay, Buck, where's your Learjet? I'm here to pick you up. Come on, let's go. Head on down to the Roosevelt Hotel. Come on, where's your Learjet? Come on in, Farron Young. Come on in, Slim Whitman. Come on in, Hank. What'd you guys do, go on into the town hall without me? Where are you, Buck? Slim? I'll pick you up, guys. I'll take you to the Palomino Club just like I did, huh? Kingston Trio. Palomino Club. Ladies and gentlemen, and here they are at the Palomino Club. The Kingston Trio. Bakersfield. How you doing, Merle Haggard? Gene Autry? Roy? Lash? Hollywood. 
this area has changed. Yeah, the old Palomino Club, man. I spent a lot of nights there. <laughs> the Flying Burrito Brothers. A lot of groups. A lot of groupies. The good old days. Rhinestone Cowboys. That was a blast. <clears throat> It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Now I'll go down here and get a cheeseburger. <laughs> playing tonight, huh? Maybe it'll be the Flying Burrito Brothers. I hope so. They're my favorite group. Burrito Brothers, the Hearts and Flowers, Larry Murray, Judy Hensky, Elvis. Oh, they all played here. Graham Parsons, Dwight Yoakam, Lone Justice. Nothing like a relaxing night at the Palomino Club. The rock and roll gypsies are riding tonight. The rock and roll gypsies are riding tonight. Wow, this place used to be full every night. Couldn't even get in the parking lot and Jasper's in there taking photos of all the stars. There's my old Buick Riviera, 71 Buick Riviera. I'll be damned, I wondered what happened to that. I wonder if I could get in here and take a look at it. Yeah, that's my old 71 Buick Riviera in there. Boy, I used to park that here a lot. Parking lot of the Palomino Club. One night it wouldn't start, I just left it. Told Jewel, you need a place to stay? Stay in my Buick Riviera. Paducah Paducah's car. Remember when Jasper took my picture uh, standing in front of that one? Me and the Rhinestone Cowboys. Hey, Jasper! Jasper!
repossess my Lincoln. I miss one payment, one lousy payment. I'm starving, I'm just starving. Laszlo, where are you, Laszlo? What the hell's going on? Laszlo, man, we said three o'clock. Oh, wireless communication. Laszlo, you know, I'm, it's, it's coming back to me why, why I fired you, Laszlo. It's coming back to me why I said I will never, never work with Laszlo Kovacs again. I'm starving. I'm just so damn hungry. Oh, man. Huh. Hey, Phil? 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 Cheeseburger. Well done. Mustard only. Is it asking too much to get a bite to eat in North Hollywood? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe it's not anyone but me. All I want is a cheeseburger. Well done. Mustard only. And I don't want to get it from any of those franchise places. I want a tasty burger. I want delicious fries the way Phil used to make it. I want the Everly Brothers harmony singing in the background. I want, I want... Laszlo, you're killing me. You by yourself. All by yourself, you're killing me. I can't believe I had to go back to the Palomino Club junkyard and get my old car back. One payment. I missed one payment. One payment. Because the guy won't send me a retainer on New Year's Eve. I said, I need a retainer. I need another $300. I would have been set. I would have had the career. I would have been somebody. But no, no, no. No money for me. Uh -uh. No, anyone but me gets it. Okay. All right, Laszlo, good seeing you, man. Hey, welcome, you know, thanks for coming in from Toledo. It's good seeing you, La Laszlo. Come here, Laszlo, let me give you a hug, buddy. Oh, it's so good to see you. Thanks for coming here. Thanks for being on time. Thanks for keeping on schedule. Thanks for showing up at Union Station when you told me you'd be here. And another thing, thanks for meeting me at Phil's Diner. You're only like two days late, Laszlo. Two days late. Why do I give people a second chance? Why do I give people a second chance? First opportunity I've had to see the Kingston Trio in 15 years. The new Kingston Trio. The original member, Bob Shane. The new guy, George Grove, he's only been with the group for 22 years. Then Nick Reynolds comes back, the old new guy, the original member. We well, got two tickets at the Alex Theater. And what happened to Laszlo? Where'd he go? You don't go get popcorn when you're watching a Kingston Trio concert. You don't go to the bathroom and not come back. Yet Laszlo somehow manages to completely disappear. And these guys are supposed to have some type of information for me. I mean, is it true? Did it happen? Did Elvis record Tom Dooley with the Flying Burrito Brothers? Not. Is it a hoax? Is there anything inside the vault? Well, if I could find Laszlo, maybe I would know. Maybe all those fans down in Australia and Germany would know. I'm gonna have to go back to downtown LA and figure this out. This is, this is a problem. I'm going back to the office. But first, I'm starving. I am so... Hungry. I'm so hungry. I could eat a McDonald. No. No. No, no, no. Maybe I'll try a Sunset Grill. I had pretty good burgers. That guy knew me. He always called me by my first name. Got your cheeseburger. Well done. Mustard only. How are you doing today? One. Oh, this is great. I'm back in Hollywood. North Hollywood, yeah. <laughs> Boy, I can't wait, can't wait, wait for Sam. He's going to take me all over the town again. And of course, Sam told me to be here. And I'm on time. I'm on time. Oh, yeah. Of course, he couldn't pick me up at the train station. But uh, anyway, he instructed me where to be. And here I am. 
Well, I'm all excited. North Hollywood, what a place to be. Yeah, I guess I ain't gonna say, maybe take me all over town. Sunset Strip, Hollywood Boulevard. And those old places we used to really go to. I don't know. You know what I should do? I'll give him a call. I know the old number. 1-800-SAM. Let me get on the phone. What? What is this? Come on, man, no, no, no. This could never happen in North Hollywood. All right, all right. I'll go in. I'll start ordering my food. Yeah, just like old times. Look at it, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I just want to stretch my arms out. Phil, it's great to be back. Just great to be back. <laughs> yeah, North Hollywood. All righty. What? Phil! 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 Oh boy, don't tell me he's closed. Come on. Oh, he's got to be open. I don't get it. Oh man, I don't get it. Phil, are you there? Oh man, I tell you, I gotta get me a hamburger. Yeah, I can't believe it. Laszlo, where are you? What you do, get up and go get popcorn and not come back? I got two tickets for the Kingston Trail, New Year's Eve night, Alex Theater, Glendale, California. Where are you, Laszlo? What do you do? Are you doing your own program? Doing your own show? Are you working for somebody else? Who knows? They never appreciate you. They never do. They never come back to thank you. I could help people all day. I could help people all night. It wouldn't, ma wouldn't make any difference. Wouldn't matter. You do a favor for someone, and they don't care. You tell somebody about one of your techniques, a proven technique, one that works, and they adapt it like it's their own, like they invented it. They take all the credit for it. I've been too nice. I've been way too nice to everybody. Way too nice. Okay, I'm gonna figure out a way to make this work. I'm gonna be happy. Oh man, I gotta get one of those hamburgers. Man, if you can only hear me, you know, one of those specialties. Sa Sam's specialty, you know, the, the, the cheeseburger. You know, the well done, the way he likes it. And of course, don't forget the mustard. Oh boy, oh boy. I don't know, I can't get it. Oh man, let's go, man. If you're, if you're there, let's go! Now wait a minute, I, I think I got this figured out. I got it figured out. One Shot Salmon Company, that's not working because the company keeps changing. So I'm gonna form a new company. I'm gonna call it Media Enterprises. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Media Enterprises, and the initials for Media Enterprises will be M-E. So my company, my new company, will be me, 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 just like everybody else. Me, 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 me. Nobody gets any help anymore. I'll do it myself. I'll keep the money. I'll work longer hours, but I don't mind working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's what no one understands. When you love something, when you have a passion, it's not work anymore. It's your life. It's your life. I wonder if Lazlo would ever understand that at rehab. Can't believe the guy goes back to Toledo, Ohio to go through rehab. And then he tells everybody he's my partner. That really upsets me. The guy was never a partner. It was always one shot Sam and company because the company keeps changing. He was never a partner. The guy worked on an hourly. He got $12 an hour. And uh, that's probably $12 an hour more than he deserved. Yeah, it is. It is $12 an hour more than he deserved. <laughs> so I get one job, I try and bring the guy back. And he doesn't show up at Union Station. I've had it. Had it!
Yeah, like I said about sunny California. Friendly people. Even the truck drivers are friendly. People on the streets are friendly. Everybody's so glad to see everybody. Okay, all right. Laszlo, where are you, buddy? Come on. Come on, let's talk about this. Now, I want to talk to you. All right, let's talk about something right now. Okay. Laszlo, you're just one of many people that I've given some opportunities to. Now, the, the opportunity is to be in association with One Shot Sam. That's the opportunity, okay? I shouldn't even have to pay you, Laszlo. You should pay me. You should pay me for all the work, for all the teaching. It's worth something. Because you can go anywhere now, Laszlo, and get a job. You don't understand that, do you? Once you get through the One Shot Sam School, yeah, once you get through One Shot Sam University, you can go anywhere and anybody will hire you. The people that don't like me are the people I've had to fire. Now, why have I fired them? I've fired them for technical incompetence. That's all, because there's one thing I can't put up with. You come in and you tell me you know how to, how to use a 9 millimeter Glock. I don't want to see you carrying it in your pants with the safety off. I don't want to see you shooting your kneecap off. I want to see precision, because speed and accuracy equals precision. Speed and accuracy equals precision. So what I'm going to do, Laszlo, I'm going to prove to you that One Shot Sam can do it all by himself. And I can do it all in one shot. One shot. We're not going to go do the job 15 times, 100 times. We're going to do it one time. One time only. I got to eat. I've got to eat. We're going to get a burger. What's open? Sunset Grill's closed. Phil's Diner's closed. Is it a conspiracy? Is it a conspiracy to shut down every favorite eatery that I like? I mean, what are they going to do next? Close Chili John's? Is Chili John's going to be closed? Go to Chili John's. I'm so hungry. Yeah, they'll be great. Chili John's. I remember my first time uh, at Chili John's when I got out to California with the Skotax. So Dr. Skotak tells me he's got this great place, really good chili. I'm really going to love it. He said his mouth waters when he thinks about it. So I'm doing some research, and I'm finding out they're putting a lot of MSG in everything. And this is what adds to the taste. This is what adds to the flavor. You listening, Laszlo? Are you paying attention? You know, I'm talking to you, Laszlo, because I know you came out here to be with me. And you came out here to be my partner and to work with me. And I know you like riding in the back seat. And I can't just be talking to hear myself talk. So I'm talking to you, all right? Chili John's. Okay, it's on Burbank. No, no, no. We're going to go there now. Maybe uh, you could just go in and get something to go. That way I could eat in the car and save time. Save a little time. Like all the time I've wasted and all the time I've spent screwing around trying to find you when you weren't at the train station. When you weren't at the Kingston Trio concert. So let's go down to Chili John's. You know, uh, one of my favorite movies was The Wild Bunch. Just reissued maybe a year ago. They showed it at the uh, Cinerama Dome. You know, the curved screen with the slight distortion on the sides. And uh, Peckinpah. Yeah, The Wild Bunch. That movie was totally improvised. Did you know that, Laszlo? It was all zen. There was no script in The Wild Bunch. They wrote the script afterwards. They gave Sam all the money he wanted. They gave him a huge crew, they gave him a lot of tequila, a lot of cocaine, and they sent him down to Mexico, all right? So here's what happened. Sam Peckinpah gets to Mexico, he's drunk, he's on coke, he's high. He puts everybody else in charge of the production. He lets all these guys get out there and start setting up shots. But once they get everything going, Sam Peckinpah goes crazy, the guy goes nuts. He comes outside and he starts screaming, you gotta redo everything. Well. I've learned a little bit from Sam Peckinpah about running my business. Go ahead and let him get started. Go ahead and let him, let him dig the hole, and then all you got to do is come in and fine tune it. But there's one problem, Laszlo, and it's a big problem. It's, it's like there's no reward working with you. It's like, it's like somebody hired me to dig a swimming pool, okay? And I go out there and I have to dig the swimming pool, and I'm digging it with a spoon. Now I can, I can get the pool dug with the spoon. That's not a problem. Oh, I can dig a swimming pool, big hole with a spoon, but you know something? It'd be a hell of a lot easier with a back hole. 
it'd be a hell of a lot easier if I had the right tools. You know, the right tools, the right combination. So I have to question, Laszlo, when I have you come all the way from Toledo, Ohio, when I, when I take you off rehab, maybe, maybe prematurely, maybe you didn't complete your, complete your, when I take you off rehab, maybe, maybe prematurely, maybe you didn't really complete your seven step program, and I bring you out here, and the first thing you do, the first thing you do to the one guy who probably cares about you a little bit, is you screw me. You don't show up at Union Station. What happened at the Kingston Trio concert? What happened at the alley? How many, how many times do I have a party, Laszlo? How many, how many, when was the last time I had a party? That's right, that's right. 1986. 1986. That was my last party. And you don't even show up for my party this year. Bluegrass Christmas. Remember the Ramones? The Ramones? They had a, a vinyl single. I bought it. I've still got it. It's called, It's Gonna Be a Punk Rock Christmas This Year. I used to play that. Every Christmas, Laszlo, I would play that song. It's Gonna Be a Punk Rock Christmas This Year. So I thought, how can I adapt that philosophy, that joyous spirit of giving in the holiday season? How can I make that fit in with something I personally care about, like bluegrass music? So what do I do? I put together the Bluegrass Christmas. And I invite all my friends, all the bluegrass bands. I, Larry Murray's there from the Hearts and Flowers. The rock and roll gypsies are riding tonight. Judy Hensky's there from Dave Gard and the Whiskey Hill Singers. Bob Mizrahi is there telling me about his new group. Oh, it's a great group. It's a great group. Every time I hear a plane, I think of you, Marty. Marty Robbins, where are you, baby? Baby Booba? Where are you, Marty? Are you coming in? Are you landing? Are there ghost riders in the sky? Is this light gonna hold for maybe another year or two? You know, Laszlo, just, let me say one thing to you. I don't, I don't mean this as a, as a criticism because it's constructive. Laszlo, you got two speeds. You've got slow and you've got extra slow. All I'm asking is that when I'm paying you $15 an hour, that I'd be your first priority. When I ask you to do something, maybe you could find time in your busy schedule to comply. Huh? Maybe? Or maybe not. Whew. Yeah, I'm waiting for Sam. It's fun, all right, but I'm getting hungry, hungry, you know. Yep. Yeah, that old Sam, he's bound to show up. Anyway, the important thing is, I'm at the right place. Phil's Diner. Yep. And I can't hardly wait till Sam get here. I can just visualize Sam right now, like we did back in 1975. And he'd be there with three Coca-Colas, right there, three bottles. He says, bring them, man. Bring them all at the same time. And don't forget that cheeseburger. Well done. Mustard only. That Sam, he knows how to order his food. <laughs> so I've been coming here for about maybe five or six years with the same order. Today it's completely screwed up. It's, it's like all wrong. You know, I'm paying for everything, always pay for everything. Can't even get a simple thing right. Nothing right. Can't get it right. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, this is some town. Town. It's not made with tender, loving care, like, like you would go to Phil's Diner and it's tender, loving care. People today have attitudes, and they've got bad attitudes. They don't, they don't like their job. They don't want to be making burgers. So why don't they do something else, like clean toilets? Yeah, well, you know, any port in a storm, as they say, and uh, who's a starving man to turn down food? But yeah, they got burgers. They're not the greatest. They're not horrible, but you can't really walk into this place and say a cheeseburger well done with mustard only. Can't do that, Laszlo, because if you do, you end up with a lettuce burger or a garden burger. Even worse, huh? So I have to tell them I want a cheeseburger, plain, well done, nothing on it except the bread, the hamburger, and the cheese. Otherwise, it's contaminated, which is what happened today, Laszlo. Okay, uh, 
So do you live around here? Can I walk you home? Man, I used to love to go to the movies when I was a kid. Wilp Wilson, Lash LaRue, Don Redberry, Clyde Beatty, the world's most famous animal trainer. He was good. Clyde Beatty, the world's most famous animal trainer. He was good. Lash LaRue. That's why I wear black. Good old Lash. Yeah, I remember the one movie that Lash LaRue was telling me about he did with Fuzzy Q. Jones. And they're out in the desert. It's really hot. He turns to Fuzzy and he's complaining, give me some water, I'm thirsty, I'm hot, hot. Fuzzy Q says, well, he wouldn't be so hot if he didn't wear black. It's true, because I saw another movie, Lawrence of Arabia, and he's in the desert, he's wearing white. Sometimes I like to get out of uh, Hollywood, come over here to Studio City. Remember all the times it took you to Arch Deli? <laughs> you know what I got at Arch Deli, don't you? Peppered beef sandwich of mustard only. Oh, they got great peppered beef there. I used to get it to go all the time. Kosher pickles, fantastic, fantastic. Now that's eating, Arch Deli. My favorite, right here in Studio City. Laszlo, how could you get that wrong? You said he'd meet me in front of the OSS sign. That doesn't say OSS. That's not OSS. How does this guy screw up repeatedly? Laszlo, Laszlo, Laszlo. How could you screw that up? Meet you in front of the sign that says One Shot Sam. Come on, that's not OSS. Sam. God, I'm supposed to meet Sam here. Where is he? Man, I know I'm on time, but Sam is never late. I mean, I can always depend on Sam. Where's Sam? Where is he, man? It's been a long time. Can't hardly wait to see Sam. Yeah, like, sure great to be back. Thanks to Sam. I sure owe it to him. Sam never let me down before. Listen, he called me in Toledo. He said I had to be here. I'm here, man. I'm here waiting for him. What a guy. Man, where is he? Sam. Wow. Where are you, kid? Man, I'm here. Hey, Sam, Sam is never late. I'm the guy that's always late. And then Sam Rose gave me hell. He said, boy, you're always late, kid. But I'll surprise him this time. Yeah, he'll be here. He never let me down before. Not Sam. down on the Sunset Strip. I remember this place all right. Yeah, the Key Club. Used to be Ben Gazzari's, he was a guy. What a character. 
the rainbow. Spent a lot of hours in there, in the Roxy, of course. Yeah, Troubadour back there, man, what a hell of a place that was. The Birds, Bob Dylan, a lot of people played there. The Whiskey, boy, that place has changed. Down on the Sunset Strip. Yeah, I remember that one night they had the riots. The Hearts and Flowers wrote a song about it called the Rock and Roll Gypsies, or Riding the Night, Larry Murray. Down on the Sunset Strip. Chris Isaac. Who's that? Ho, ho! Pop, can you do me a favor? I'm looking for a friend of mine. His name is Sam. This guy's never late, you understand? I know this guy. I worked with this guy for years. He's my buddy. We're old timers from Hollywood. Sam. You haven't seen him, have you? Sam. No. Sam. Haven't seen him. Boy, everybody knows this guy. Sam. Yeah. Oh, this guy's terrific, man. You know, he promised to meet me here. And like I say, no. I'm here. That's what counts. Because I can't let Sam down. I appreciate you, you know, putting that down, the machinery there for me. Well, I tell you, anyway, I'm going to wait here. Because this guy's done a million things for me. You know, he's my buddy. Ah, uh, well, like I said, I, I'll, I'll be, I'll just wait here for him. Okay. You know, nice guy, in case you see him. Okay. Right, thank you, my friend. I'm worried about Laszlo, real worried. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song, I know that. Sam, Sam, where are you, Sam? I'm here. <laughs> ah, he'll be here. What am I worried about? You know, he's the man. He's the man. Yeah. I always have to do everything by myself. Everything. No help. No one wants to work with me. I don't know why. I'm generous. I pay people more than they deserve, that's for sure. Guys, it's been a long time since I've seen him. I bet he hasn't changed a bit. Yeah, of course I gained a little weight since I seen Sam. Yeah, well, back in Hollywood. Hollywood, that's a joke nowadays. Hard to believe I had an office on Hollywood Boulevard. Wouldn't have one there anymore. What a place to be. Yeah, we'll be talking about the old Hollywood days again. Great old Sam. Yep. That guy was pretty nice, you know? You know, I can't hardly wait to see Sam. I, anybody I see, I want to ask them if they've seen Sam. Because, I mean, everybody knows Sam. Sam's a regular in this town. Yeah. Yeah, he'll show up. I don't mind. It's great, man. What a great evening this is. What a great place. The whiskey. Yeah. Elvis Costello, I remember the night he played there way back in... Uh, November 76, Elvis Costello, the first place he ever played in America when he came to Hollywood, he played. Uh... Yeah, boy, we sure got a lot to talk about. Yeah, yeah, the old days, finest restaurants, coffee shops, cafes, even the broads, man. Man, he took care of me. Man, I remember when I came into town, he says, kid, I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna fix you up with some real sweet broads. And here's a guy who hardly knew me at the time. And he's going to tell me, he's going to look out for me. That's, a, that's the kind of guy Sam is. What's good for him is good for me. Boy, that's a real buddy. That's a real, real friend. Boy, that's the kind of guy I really need. Yeah, a lot of history, a lot of memories here. Yeah. I wonder where he can be. Ah, he'll get here. I, I don't know what I'm worrying myself for. You know, Sam, when he tells me he's going to be here, hey, so he's 20 minutes late. Big deal. I mean, it's a friend. I, I'll wait here an hour. I'll even wait three hours for the man. It's a whole new year. A whole new year for opportunity to get something accomplished for One Shot Sam. I'll do it. It'd just be a lot faster if I had some help. Wait a minute. Maybe I don't need Sam. 
you know, hey, come on. You know, he's fixed me up. He really set me up real good in this town. I made a few contacts. I never told Sam about it. I met a couple of producers. In fact, they even offered to put me in a film. Good directors. Guys thought I had some talent. Hey, of course, it's uh, thanks to Sam, of course. But uh, who knows? You never know. The guy can change his mind. You know, you know Hollywood, they, they get moody sometimes. You know, you know, I've been around this town. Of course, I, I was out of town for a while. You know, things haven't changed. Give me a few days. I'll work it out. Maybe, uh, who knows? It could be to my advantage. Who knows? I might even produce a film. You know, a little money, get started. Maybe things will develop. You know, I can tell a good script. That's very important. Get that script. Get a good script. Work it out with the, get a good director. Work with a good director. Get some good actors. You know, I'm not gonna go overboard. I make a low budget picture. Give it a shot. Yeah, maybe I won't need Sam. It's possible. Yeah, you know. It's like they always say in Hollywood, that's who you know. Yeah. Who was that one guy who did that movie, uh, black and white film, kind of a cult movie, uh, Flying Saucers over Hollywood? Ed Wood, Ed Wood, yeah. Is this Borgner's, is that the, uh, Borgner's the bar that Ed Wood used to go into all the time? Bill, Bill, cheeseburger, mustard only.